Uh, g'day everybody, uh, so I had a few people ask me for uh, how I made these crates uh, that I posted up on Reddit the other day. Uh, now these are pretty simple, um, I don't have access to a lot of fancy materials or 3D printing or anything like that so I uh, just jumped in and tried to make some of these myself. So for this you just need some simple foam board, uh, find the paper stuff works best, the plastic stuff's a little bit hard to work with, especially when gluing it up. Um, but uh, you also need some uh, paper. I just found some printed paper is fine. Uh, I use some uh, wire. This is just some plastic coated, I think it's floral wire or something like that. It's a couple of bucks maybe. Uh, this is some corrugated paper I found at the office supply store. It was about five, six bucks uh, here in Australia, so probably about 40 or 50 cents in America, but um, should be able to find it around the place. Doesn't matter what colour it is, uh, it's good stuff. Uh, perfect for the scale, I find as well. Um, so, first thing I do is uh, I try, I try uh, to uh, <laughs> draw out a, uh, a bit of a plan, um, mainly just to write down my measurements. Um, so, I don't need to get too uh, in depth with this. Uh, you can wing most of it, it doesn't have to be neat and tidy. Uh, most of everything you cut will be covered up. Uh, but I did find the um, Cutting the uh, foam is definitely easier with a, with a uh, sharp knife, so make sure you've got one of those handy. Uh, now to make the 50 by 50 square, um, you will have to account for the double um, thickness of the foam uh, so that you don't end up with a lopsided container. Um, so the measurements of my two uh, pieces of foam stuck together were 8 millimetres, uh, so therefore I know I need two, two sides, a top and a bottom at 50 millimetres wide and uh, two sides to fit in between those, uh, they'll come at 42 millimetres each. Um, now I googled the size for a 28 millimetre scale shipping container and it come up with 50 by 130 uh, millimetres, so that's what I'm going for on this one. Um, now I do suggest you use a ruler to cut, uh, just trying to cut there with the uh, foam as a, as a guide but it's no good. Um, but like I said, your edges don't have to be too neat, um, you will find that um, uh, most of everything will be covered up, uh, so there's nothing too much to worry about as far as um, neatness of your edges go. Uh, but it's just a lot makes it a lot easier if you've got a sharp knife to get through these. Um, so once you get these all cut up and uh, measured up, you're ready to start uh, hot gluing these up. So uh, just check they're all about the same length. Uh, get some hot glue. I just put this on the short sides um, first, and then I just stick them straight down. Uh, you do want to make sure these are uh, more or less. 90 degrees, it will become uh, it will become a bit difficult to keep the shape if you uh, glue these down. Uh, you do get a good five or ten seconds of working time with that hot glue, um, so as long as you're pretty quick, you should be able to move things around and, and get it pretty square. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is just get these um, corrugated sheets. Now I need three of these. I'm not going to worry about the bottom. I want it nice and flat. Uh, so I know these will be about 130 mil. So um, I, I did measure them off the side of the container there, um, but again, uh, your 50 mil should be fine. Um, but usually at this point I'm measuring straight off the, the thing I'm making. Um, I usually make a few mistakes as I go. So uh, best to measure off your container if you can, rather than the previous measurements, just to allow for any glue and mistakes. Um, now you just want to make sure you pick your bottom because um, you want that to be flat, doesn't matter if you get a bit of overhang on the ends or on the top, um, but you do want a flat flat side on the bottom so you don't want a, anything sort of overhanging down there. Um, you will find you probably need to trim up some of your uh, corrugated to fit just to account for that overhang that you're going to get on some of them. Uh, but as you can see there that's all glued on. Still looks pretty crap but uh, we'll get there. Um, we've got some overhangs there, I'll probably trim that up with a knife. Um, you might find a pair of scissors actually was easier than this. But uh, yeah, just cut that off, um, just because you want to put your ends on, you want them to sit pretty flush when you put them on. Uh, so now I'm going to work on the frame, so you can see my camera died halfway through making this, but luckily I uh, only got halfway through, so um, this is the process I uh, use for adding the frames to the outside. Um, I have seen plastic card used, it, it looks a little bit, um, it looks fine to me, it looks good, it's a bit thick, but um, I think the only problems you probably have with this paper being as thin as it is, because this is just A4 printer paper, uh, the only problem you might have is if you're um, brush painting this, if you've got wet paints going onto this paper it might cause you issues, but um, as you can see here I uh, slather this thing with glue 
uh, before I whack it on. Make sure you got it covering everywhere and you want a good amount on there because you don't want this peeling off. Um, there's not a lot of contact point on that corrugated card so uh, make sure you do put plenty of glue there. Uh, just keep in mind you will have glue all over the place. But um, It's pretty simple. Once you get your glue on there just push these on. Um, now you want to try and pinch them a little bit on the corners so that you keep that crisp edge. Um, you don't want these to be rolled over um, or have rounded edges on them. Um, now with the PBA glue you get a fair bit of working time with this so um, so long as you line up your ends okay um, you should be fine. Um, I've pretty much eyeballed all these um, widths and stuff for these these frames so uh, they may not be identical but they don't have to be. Um, and you know what there's going to be some bumps and ripples in there as well but uh, it just adds some character to the to the uh, finished piece. Uh, you know. now here you can see it's all done. I've got the frames on the outsides there. Um, the bottom's all nice and smooth. Make sure you get good glue on there as I said. Final thing now is um, for the main container will be to make the access doors. Um, so for these uh, I've just measured it off the container itself. I need one for each end. Um, so I'm just going to cut these out and start laying on some frames on these. Um, now you see here I mark my uh, cutting board. Uh, I just find sometimes that's a bit easier when I've got repetitive cuts um, than using the ruler over and over. Uh, and you can see my cutting board is in inches. Uh, most of the time I'll work in uh, millimetres, so it's not the most handy. Um, now for that, you just, once you've got your engine cut, um, obviously fit it on first. Make sure you uh, don't have too much overhang, because we will seal up these corners, but um, if you've got too much overhang, it'll be hard to get a nice straight flat edge. Um, so trim them up on the, on the crate, and we'll get started to adding in some, uh, some framing around this. So this is pretty simple, just some more cardboard box, cereal box I've got there. Um, just cut some thin strips, a um, little bit of glue on the corners, um, strip it in, just framing it up. Um, you can use this technique to make all kinds of doors, I guess. Uh, this works fine for me. I didn't want, I don't need too much detail um, on the doors. You could add more. Um, you certainly go in and add some weathering, which I haven't done on any of the crates, or the containers I've made so far. Don't need to be too clean. Again, um, uh, excess glue and all those sorts of things will be, um, you'll be able to weather those away. Um, so they won't look uh, like glue or mistakes. Hopefully they'll come together all right in the end. And uh, any, you'll see, especially with the wires, uh, it's, really <laughs> it's impossible for me to get those to be straight. So um, even bent and, and a little bit, you know, misshapen, they still look really good on the, on the finished product. So. Uh, you can see there I've just trimmed off, beveled some of those corners a little bit, just trimmed off some excess there. Uh, I don't want it to be too too sharp on the corners. Um, it does, I find it also tends to highlight the, the uh, fact that those doors aren't very square. Uh, they're square enough for our purpose though, so we don't get too carried away with, uh, with those sorts of details. Um, now I'm just adding some inner trim there. Um, and these doors, these access doors will be just about ready to go. Um, the PVA glue does take a little while and it will warp this card, um, which isn't going to be too much of a problem because we're going to hot glue it onto the container, so that hot glue will grip it pretty well. Um, the first lot I made, I did press these down um, to let them dry under a book so that they were a bit flatter, but uh, like I said, using the hot glue, I don't think it really matters. You should be right to pretty much stick these straight on. Now the reason I don't put the wire on yet um, for these access doors is just for the simple fact that when I glue them on I have to press them down pretty hard with this glue um, to get a nice, um, you know, get a nice contact on there. So um, with the wires on there they're a little bit more fragile so it's best to, to do this before um, putting those wires on. Um, so once you get the two on ends on there, um, make sure you stick them up the right way. A bit hard to get off if you don't. Once you get the ends on there we're right to um, start looking at this wire. Uh, it's a bit of a pain. Uh, certainly not an easy task if you haven't got the right glue, which you'll see I don't actually appear to have the right glue for this task. It, it's, it's way too long working time on the glue I was using, so a little bit tricky getting those um, wires to stick on there, but I found once I get um, once I get the wires on and these um, strips around the outside, uh, it really does come together. 
Um, so these strips on the outside, I go all the way around except for the bottom. Um, this just covers up the gap between the corrugated paper and that um, access door we've just made. Um, so you start on the bottom corner and work your way right around the top. Um, you can cut these strips to whatever thickness you want. Uh, I just found here card worked better than paper, uh, just because it's a little bit, it can be a little bit wonky over the top of these this card and that gap. So um, having the having the slightly stiffer strip there um, just made it seal together a bit straighter and it looked a little bit neater at the end of the day. Um, give it a little bit of point of difference from the side frames as well, being that they're paper and I've got card around the end. Um, so once they're on, everything looks sealed up and ready to go. Next thing is those wires I mentioned. Uh, these are a pain, uh, but we'll get there. Um, I'll speed this up in a, in a minute so that you don't have to watch me painstakingly go through all of this. Um, basically, I just measure one out, put it up against the wire, bang, cut eight more. Um, so I want four for each end. Um, and like I said, getting this stuff to be straight is really difficult, but in the end of the at the end of the day I didn't even worry about it. I just figured it's too hard to try and get that straight. I was wasting a bunch of time on it, so I just figured I'd leave them a little bit bent and they look fine. Um, so I'm gonna put a dab of glue here. As I mentioned, this is not the right glue, so this stuff stayed wet for ages and was quite difficult to get anything to stick in there other than my fingers, um, which seemed to glue together quite well. Uh, so once you get these on, um, you will need to add additional drops of glue probably um, onto each uh, wire once it's kind of set in place. This just give it a little bit of extra strength once you've got it in place. Um, a little bead of glue over the top is not going to hurt. Uh, certainly not doesn't look bad at all. Um, but yeah, once you get these down and set in place and they're a bit hardened, uh, just go back over the top and just add another drop of glue on the, uh, onto those and that'll keep them in place. Um, now I have gone through and done the second one as well, so I got both of those up, looking at crap as but, as I mentioned, black bomb that and a lot of the gaps get covered up, well we can't see them as much, and uh, we, we're looking pretty good. Uh, now the only thing I did after that, after the black bomb on all these shipping containers, um, now I am airbrushing so I'm using um, Vallejo primer here, but um, the only other thing I did then was um, to uh, airbrush over a, a little bit of the uh, ultramarine blue surface primer from Vallejo um, that just went straight over the black uh, and you can see here it turned out fine. Uh, so that was just primed and then just a little bit of ultramarine over the top. Uh, you can go back in obviously as much as you like and put in as much detail as you want. Some weathering on these would probably look pretty good so I might go back and try that. Uh, the final thing we did here was uh, use this little plastic stencil I found and uh, just tape off the letters you want to put on, line it up, and a bit of squirt with a spray gun, a spray can or airbrush. Uh, you can probably stipple it on with a brush even. Uh, through that stencil will work fine. Uh, you see these extra bits of glue I've got on here, they'll weather up nicely, you paint those into rust, whatever you like, uh, and I think that's come up pretty good. So please post up some comments or suggestions below or any things you're working on. I'd love to see it. Uh, you guys have a great day. Thanks.